nowadays uh, you can see many human-like robots. In controlling those robots, uh, one approach is to command each body part of the robot to move in a certain way. This method is very similar to creating animation where each motion is composed by a human motion designer or by mimicking human motion. I take a different approach from this. So in order to tell the robot what to do, I have created an algorithm that understands what the robot physically is. It understands weight of the arm, weight of the head, where they are located, and the structure of the robot. So if I command or tell the robot what to do, then this algorithm figures out the best way to achieve the goal or the task. So here is the result, a video showing that uh, I command the robot to move forward, simply that. And the algorithm computed how much forces should be exerted on each body part. And these forces enable the robot to walk. When I presented this result to many people, actually, a few people told me that this robot walks like a robot. Right? It's a robot. But they said that. It's not like a human. So do you agree with them? So which part is not natural and much? The main uh, complaints were basically the arm motion. This robot walks, but not with arm swings. But human walks with arm swings. Right? So this made me wonder how I can create uh, the ro robot walking with arm swing motion. So I have to work on this problem. And I actually walked myself many times, many hours, thinking about this problem, how I can solve this problem, right? And finally, uh, the answer came from biomechanics. So this arm swing motion is, in fact, related to the ground uh, reaction moment between the foot and the ground. So this foot tw twist friction. Okay? So the more we swing arms, we will have less friction on the foot, twist friction. So it will make us a little more comfortable. So I incorporated this idea in robot control. So here, uh, I just commanded the robot to walk forward as before. And at the same time, I said to reduce this friction uh, moment on the foot, between the foot and the ground. And this arm swing motion was naturally came out from this algorithm. Another uh, example of using biomechanics in robotics is balance. So I command the robot to stand and make a balance. And if I pull the robot forward, in this example with the blue arrow, then robot tries to make a balance. And here using arms. So once again, I want to emphasize that I did not command the robot to use arms. This arm swing motion was, came out from the algorithm which understands the physical properties of the robot. That's why it swings arms. I mean, rotating the arms to make balance. So having worked on uh, many problems, like these problems, uh, applying the biomechanics ideas into robotics, I want to do the research beyond this. So basically, I want to capture motion characteristics of different people and represent these different motions to the robot. So these are actually uh, two videos that we captured from motion capture system. So here, two people are dancing the same choreography for the same song. But you can see that they are different, right? So human can see the differences. Now the question is, how can we represent this uh, slight difference of the people and represent it mathematically? and then produce different motion representing different people. So this is uh, another challenge. And here is another example. My graduate student, Sumin Park, walks on different shoes. So one is high heel, and the other is uh, normal running shoes. So can you tell which one is which? If you imagine a woman walks on high heels, Usually, you will see a little bit more up and down motion and more upper body motion with arm swing lively, and that's the, on the right. 
I hope many people guessed it correctly. Uh, actually, when I had a survey on this, more than 90% of people guessed it correctly. So that uh, implies that people, as a human, can see the differences. Now, how can we represent it and mathematically and produce these motions? And this is a bit different from previous example that it's the same person on different conditions. Right? So how can we do this? So I'd like to finish my talk by showing this last video of controlling a robot through a motion capture system. Here is a Sang Young Kim, my graduate student, actually sitting over there right now today. So he's standing in a motion capture system and moving his hand and showing grasping motion. And robot is mimicking this motion, right? You can see that. And at a first glance, it may look very simple, right? So it's just like trying human hand motion with a robot hand. What's the difficulty? But if you think about it again, then these two hands are different. So robot hand and human hand are different, look similar but different. So for example, this uh, robot hand has four fingers only and has less number of joints. So the challenge here is that how can we match these two motions so that it looks natural and also at the same time, the robot should be able to perform similar tasks as a uh, human hand does. So as you can see from these uh, examples, the, the convergence research between robotics and biomechanics is very, very natural. Right? So robotics can get a lot of benefit from biomechanics producing natural motions, and biomechanics can use robotics to demonstrate their ideas. So I believe that through this course of con convergence research between biomechanics and robotics, we can get to learn a lot about ourselves human behavior and human motion. Thank you.